you be forgiven for thinking it's a regular Saturday morning, I'm at home watching Click. But actually, I'm not at home. I don't usually have three robot friends in my house. Pepper's here, Pepper's watching Click as well. I'm actually in a laboratory that's made to look like a home. And what you can't see is it's absolutely fully kitted out with sensors and Internet of Things devices to enable people who need care needs at home to live more independently. Some we might recognise, you might have in your own home. Alexa, turn on the kitchen lights. But there are also a raft of other things embedded all throughout this setup to detect the various needs of the people that might be living in somewhere like this, including some help from these fellas. Hey, Pepper. Part of the wonderfully named National Robotarium, based at Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh, this so-called ambient assisted living lab is almost fully functioning and includes a lounge, kitchen, bedroom and bathroom. It uses a combination of sensors, cameras, Internet of Things and cloud technologies to provide a space where researchers, care providers and end users of assisted living services can co-create technologies and solutions. But why does this need something built to look like a flat and not just a conventional lab? It's very important for us that it looks like a domestic environment where people can actually carry out the normal activities because the, one of the reasons is that we want to collect the data uh, about uh, those activities and uh, we want to do it in an environment that is un as naturalistic as possible so that when we use a technology in the real world, in the real environment, we are more sure that uh, that technology will work. This laboratory is designed to be used for real-world research by postgraduate students using data to study what applications and solutions can be used by care providers in the future. It's also experimenting with robotics to see how these can be used to complement existing care services and to test the interaction with people using them. We are testing RFID radio frequency identification. You may see some of those tags on the floor that we are testing at the moment. And they provide information on uh, whereabouts of humans and we can also understand uh, by using machine learning techniques and uh, detect the disturbances in the radio frequency um, environment that tell us where people are in the home and again to understand uh, how well they are moving about, if they have fallen down, if they need any help. Normally this lab would be working with the most important people in this process, the end users of services. However, coronavirus, like most areas of life, has impacted the lab and its ability to carry out its work. However, one PhD student has created a 3D model of the facility and through cameras already installed, it's hoped that it can be used remotely. The fact that there's a real focus on the end user and this being a collaborative process is really positive. And I think also that the lab has remote access. So even with you know social distancing in place, more and more people can become involved. And the more people that are involved, I think, the more suited the tech will be to meeting individual needs. Now, smart homes of the future concepts aren't new. Indeed, on Click, we've seen many iterations over the years. But the people involved in this project say that their aim is to create and provide realistic, affordable solutions that aren't just a concept.